Hey guys, welcome back to the channel again today. So today's video is going to be about uh, 12 volt systems. So like in inbuilt vehicle systems and also portable systems and different ways you can go about doing it. Um, and I'll give you guys a look at the system that I bought um, to, to run in the back of the F truck. So uh, let's get into it. So guys, we're just going to run over some different 12 volt systems that you can run in the back of your four wheel drive. There's so many portable systems now on the market. Um, a lot of like power pack style systems. Um, you can get inbuilt systems like with Red Arc and there are DC to DC chargers and all this sort of stuff and just have a battery or you can have a portable system um, like the Bain Tech or uh, a few others on the market um, I know Adventure Kings make a, a battery box as well now there's uh, I think it's tough pack is another one um, there's a bunch of different battery boxes portable systems on eBay there's a vast range of different power options to, to run a 12 volt system in your four-wheel drive so so some people ask like why do you need a 12 volt system why do you need a second or third battery in your four-wheel drive well it's pretty simple really you, you're gonna run a fridge you're gonna run a bunch of accessories that's a lot of load to put on your starting battery and your starting battery is not really designed to have small amounts of current drawn from it so unless you go with like an Optima deep cycle where you can get a yellow top that's made for starting and for current draw and that's what I was running in the F truck. I'm still running both Optimas, the yellow tops under the bonnet. So they're a 55 amp hour, they're not very big, but they're a starting and a deep cycle battery all in one. So I had 110 amp hours all up of power in the truck, but that was also to start it. So I needed to go and get another 12 volt system or battery for the truck so I could run my fridge and my accessories, charging camera equipment, charging the drone. I just want a portable system in the truck so when I'm done with the truck, I just simply take it out and I can just put it in my next truck or I can use it for something else. We might use it for the Raptor Ranger if we want to run a fridge in the back of that or I have that portable battery pack there and it's not an inbuilt system where everything's wired into the vehicle because it's just a headache to try and remove it all when you go to sell your vehicle. So most of the time people will just sell it with that in there and then you'll have to upgrade and buy everything again. Um, sometimes it's a good thing because there's a lot of new technology that comes out over that period if you might own your car for three or four years, five years, whatever it is. The stuff that you put in five years ago may be a little bit outdated and now there's way better technology. So it has its pros and cons with doing a inbuilt system versus a portable system. So as you guys can see, or you've all, you've all seen the fridge slide in the fridge, but that's where I've got the VS2 Baintech power top mounted. And as you can see, I still wanted to use the, uh, the ammo can just there. So I've had to mount the fridge slide just slightly offset, which helps it clear that gas strut and stuff for the window when it comes out anyway. So it kind of worked out pretty good. But yeah, with these batteries, it's kind of hard because their fascia with all their information displayed is usually not at the end, it's usually on the front. So it's kind of hard to mount these systems, especially in a canopy like this. But when you have a steel or aluminium canopy, you can kind of mount them sideways and it's a lot, lot easier to view it. But um, I've actually bought some, I've got a battery tray there underneath it. I've bought some rubber to chock it up a little bit. And what I'll do is I'll show you guys here. I can actually see everything straight through the window. So I can read its volts, its amps going in, its amps coming out, plus its uh, charging state and what it's actually doing. I can actually um, just see that all here from the side. So, And then I've just got the 12 volt outlets up there. I just sit things up here on the windowsill just up there if I need to charge a battery or something for the drone I just sit things up in there but then I've also got the Bain Tech this uh, extra little power panel here 
So it's got a voltmeter on it. Voltmeter. It's got an override. It's got a 12 volt socket, an ingle socket, and also a uh, USB as well. So, but I'll um I'll get the unit out now, guys, and we can take a good look at it. So you'll see I've got the blue. Blue is uh, vehicle input. The Anderson grey is output, so it's uh, powering that little panel. And it's also gonna be powering the rooftop tent. And then the red is uh, unregulated solar. So once I um, get the solar panel on top of the rooftop tent, then I can uh, plug straight into that with my unregulated solar. But um, we'll go over some solar stuff at the end of the video, guys, just to kind of clarify just some stuff that people don't understand and um, hopefully I can help someone out today just because there's a lot of misinformation out there on the internet and there's just some stuff I want to rectify just because a lot of people don't know so but anyway we'll get the Bain Tech out now and we'll have a good look at it. Alright guys so we have the Bain Tech Power Products Power Top V2 12 volt 135 amp hour AGM so that's pretty much how it comes so we'll just go over some of the features on the front so you've got 12 volt socket there another 12 volt socket there you've got a ingle socket and another ingle socket so the good thing about ingle sockets guys is um when you put them in, I'm not sure if you can see it, but they actually, they lock in where a normal 12 volt, they just rattle out. So the best thing to do, whether you've got a Waco or whatever you've got, um, go to, uh, I don't know, BCF or um, even look on eBay. They Whoever sells Ignal, buy one of their sockets and cut yours off the Waco or get your auto electrician to take it off your Waco wire it up so that way when you're on off-road driving rough terrain your bloody fridge socket doesn't just rattle out of here fall out and then you've been driving for two hours with your fridge off getting to camp with cold uh, hot beer is not going to be not going to be a fun time so one that's just one tip guys just go and grab an ignal socket swap it over on your on your fridge and um you'll be gary sweet so then we've also got two usbs um you got mains so that's when you plug into mains that light will come up um when your vehicle's charging that light will come up solar that light will come up uh boost and float i'd say it may f i'm pretty sure it floats between those so it bounces back and forth, so it charges and it floats, charges and floats. Um, and then obviously your flat battery, it's all over if you've got a flat battery. So um, yeah, but we'll just turn it on now. So you got on and off just here. So it's telling me 12.8 volts, so she's pretty charged up. And then I really like this, guys. Um, when you plug your solar in, this will actually give you a reading just here of your amps coming in and your amps going out. So you can see what your fridge is pulling or however many accessories you've got bolted up to the power top. It'll actually tell you all the amps that are coming out of it. And then it'll also tell you the amps going in. So if you've got, I don't know, 10, 12 amps coming out, then you're probably, uh, and you've only got six amps going in, you know that you're, uh, you're pulling more from the battery than what actually charging the batteries keeping up with so which is a really cool feature it's got this nice little this is all anodized aluminium this little handle just here so it's uh you can move it around we'll just go around to the side here so it's got a little air vent there and you've got uh we'll read these ones so you've got uh your red just here is solar exit charge input max 25 amps so means you can run a maximum of 25 amps of solar coming in vehicle charge input automatic switch on at 13.2 uh, volts so it automatically switches on and lets the power come through I'm guessing after your, your starting batteries are above 13.2 volts 
However, I don't think that this isolates and clicks off from your starting batteries because it was bloody beeping on me at the weekend um, still accepting charge from the main batteries because they were above obviously 13.2 volts so once I'd say once they drop your front batteries drop below 13.2 volts then it would probably cut out I'm only assuming I'm not too sure um, and then you've also got 50 amp battery output just here so um, come around this side now got another little air vent just there and then we've also got your 240 AC so what I've done with the 240 AC is I've left that plugged in in the vehicle so it's up the back there I've ran the cable down and I've actually mounted it so it's actually nice and snug down around the corner down here we'll go and have a look at that so I've just got it just mounted just there so when I get home from a big trip I can just go bang plug my cable straight from the shed into that and this will then trickle feed this thing so she's all nice and charged up ready to go for the next trip so again guys this is Australian designed and manufactured I like to support Australian products and as far as I'm concerned 90% of them are the best on the overland touring four-wheel drive market anyway because we've been doing this for a long long time um, pretty much longer than anyone else so guys, I'll just talk about the weight. So it, it, it does weigh a bit. I'm not too sure exactly how much, but it is an AGM. So you kind of pick up an AGM that's around 135 amp hours, and there's a um, there's a there's a bit of weight to them. So that's kind of the reason why a lot of guys go with lithium if they have a weight issue with their truck. So if they need to save a, a few kilograms, then they'll obviously go with a lithium. The thing is price. You've got um, performance, price. And weight they pretty much all nearly perform the same as far as I'm concerned from my experience I've used lead crystal I've used AGM I've had some experience with lithium but not vehicle input lithium but I'm pretty sure they all they're all gonna work about the same the thing is just the price and the weight so if price isn't a factor then go lithium if you need to save weight that is if you don't need to save weight and you've got plenty of payload left then just go on AGM save yourself the money you're still going to get what you're after it's 135 amp hours that's a fair bit guys um, but if even if you bought I'm not too sure if you could link another battery with this um, you probably could and then you could have even more amp hours on top of that so but for my application guys 135 amp hours the short little trips that I'm doing currently on the weekends and that right now hopefully looking to do a big trip soon this is adequate for what I'm doing right now once the tents on and the 200 watt solar panels up there charging all the time feeding this thing I don't think I'm gonna have a lot of issues between having 110 amp hours of starting battery 135 amp hours here I think I'll be uh, pretty good so I can also run solar straight into my starting batteries as well if I do need to charge something and this can't handle it but it, it's going to handle it but if it can't for instance I can charge things through the standard 12 volt outlets on the vehicle and I can just charge with my other 200 watt solar panels my um, throw out ones the blanket and the other one can just be run in the fridge and anything else in there I have getting powered so we'll uh, pack up here now and there's just a few brief things that I want to touch on about solar I'll do a whole nother video on solar if people want me to do that if you guys leave a comment below and you want me to do a whole video on solar there's just one thing I want to clarify that a lot of people don't clarify um, on solar panels and what people think we'll, we'll go and have a look at it now and we'll talk about it Alright guys, back in the shed, so let's just touch briefly on one thing about solar that I want to clear up. That is not a regulator. That is not a regulator. That box on the back of the solar panel is not a regulator. So that's the panel that I'm going to be putting on the top of the rooftop tent when I get it. But yeah, just want to clarify that. This here. This box on the back of your solar panels, most of them have it. If they don't, it's a little bit dodgy, but whatever. That is simply a junction box. That's all it is, it's just a junction box for the wires coming out of the panel. 
it's not a regulator. So just make sure when you do hook up your solar, it's going through a system, like I said before, on the Bain Tech, where it's unregulated. So unregulated means that you don't have a regulator on the back of your panel already. A lot of good companies put regulators already on them, or they come, uh, just for instance, um, the King's kit, Adventure King's 4Drive Supercenter, it comes with a regulator that you have to go panels, Anderson plug, regulator, regulator out to your battery or whatever. So these, just remember that these boxes on the back, they're only junction boxes on 90% of the panels, they're just junction boxes. Um, they'll, or they'll either have a junction box and then they'll have beside it, they'll have a solar controller. It'll actually say on it solar controller, you'll see the wires going in, the wires coming out. That controls the solar. Why it's so important to control the solar? You'll simply destroy your battery because there'll be so much power going into your battery. Your, ba your battery needs, needs that solar power to be regulated so it just trickle feeds it in and lets that battery absorb that power coming in. So you hook a panel straight to your battery you're going to destroy it so i just want to touch briefly on that so guys one more thing i want to clarify is amp hours now amp hours is the amount of amps that whatever you've got attached to that battery is going to draw so just say for instance your fridge draws three amps per hour so if you've got a hundred amp hour battery you really have 50 amp hours of power you don't have a hundred amp hours so whenever you buy a battery with its amp hours, halve the amp hours, and that's how much legitimate amp hours you have of usable power. So just to make it simple, if you have a 100 amp hour battery, you really have 50 amp hours. So just halve it. So then if you're drawing three amps per hour, then you divide that over your 50 amp hours, and then you can work out how long you, your fridge can run on that 50 amp hours so just to clarify that people that don't understand the amp hours that's how it works so if you've got a 100 amp hour battery it's really 50 because you halve it and then if your fridge uh, draws say three amps per hour you divide that over the 50 hours and that'll give you a reading of how many hours your fridge can run for so guys just another thing i want to clarify when you're installing one of these Bain techs is if you read you, need, you kind of need to read all the inf information on the back here so with the current setup that i have in the truck i need to get a dc to dc charger fitted to the vehicle because of the smart alternator on the truck it's only ever going to charge the two front batteries that are under the bonnet to what it thinks are adequate anything above that it's going to go oh you don't need any more charge so it's going to cut it off so therefore this battery at the back isn't going to be getting the full charge that it needs when i'm driving the vehicle so basically i need to go from those batteries to a dc to dc charger with the isolator through here to this battery so that way the alternator in the truck recognizes that hey you've got three batteries i'm going to charge all of them to their maximum so that just just make sure you read this stuff here guys or any information on the product that you're putting in so yeah this is something that i was curious about with this i didn't know if this had a dc to dc charger in it but um when i when i bought it i'm um, just reading the stuff here on the back no no dc to dc charger fitted internally so this does not have a dc to dc charger in it so guys, basically with this system now, um, because I've only got the positive and negative running from my starting batteries all the way through to this system, this battery is not going to get optimum charge. So now what I've got to go and buy is a C-Tech uh, DS250, and it will then charge this battery. It'll amplify the charge coming from the alternator into this battery because standard... The alternator on this truck is only designed to charge the two starting batteries up front um, and then pretty much cut off once it knows they're at full peak. So this battery here in the back is not going to get its optimum charge. So I need to go and get that C-Tech charger to put in between there to make sure that this system 
has the best chance of being fully charged by the time I get to camp. Um, and it'll also yeah op- just optimise the, the power that's coming from the, op- the alternator. It'll um, amplify that up to make sure that this battery is uh, yeah fully charged by the time I get there. So guys, a really another cool bit of kit that the missus bought me um, for Christmas. <laughs> so she bought me an Aqua Cube. So we finally got it. I just wasn't. I just told her not to worry about it until we're uh, until I kind of think that we needed it, um, so she could buy it for me. So um, yeah, Aqua Cube Logic. It's a lithium rechargeable one. So next camping trip while I'm away, I'll do a full review on it. Um, but my mate has one, he has the old green one, and awesome. So Tony that you seen in the last video, he has a uh, he has a, an Aqua Cube as well, the, the previous generation, the green one. And I loved it, I thought it was awesome. So, and I will go over the features and why I chose this over some of the other styles of hanging um, hot water systems that you can get for camping and stuff. So, I was going to do a full system in the back of the F truck, but again, when you, when, if you guys are still subscribers, when I get the next truck in about 12 months or so, once this truck's got its K's up, the next truck build is going to be off its head. So that'll be uh, in conjunction with the new trailer and everything. So it'll be an all flowing seamless from the truck to the trailer. It'll all match in together and it'll be pretty sick guys. So, but I'll do a full review on this when I go camping in uh, yeah, a couple of weeks time. So anyway, guys. I will uh, catch you in the next video. See you.